Well, Panola County's been getting some money. I know. Yes, sir. We're hey. good. Hey, y'all. Are y'all hot? No? I was till a little while ago. If you are, go take a cold shower and you'll warm up, cool off, something. All right. I hadn't been here in a few days, so y'all bear with me. Leroy. Leroy Brown. Leroy, that's right. <laughs> you don't have to go on with the rest of it. He's, he's doing all right. He's stopping himself. He's filling that check. I got a question for y'all before we get started. True? Okay. Dale said it's true. I heard there was some rain coming. Possibility. I've <laughs> got a sister who lives in Missouri, so I kind of got her philosophy. Show me. <laughs> how many... How, how many of you cut your grass today? No? How many had a runaway? I just cut the parts that were green. <laughs> With the rest scissors? Of, where, where we've been watering, the rest yeah. of it's just dirt and weeds. Probably not a good time to get in the lawn mowing business. Probably not a good time to get in the firewood business this winter either because there's going to be plenty of it. So if anybody needs some firewood, I got some trees that you can come have. So, some peach tree. They got peaches on them? Oh. <laughs> You're done? Hey, that's right. Put them jokers on the smoker. Yep. That's smoker wood. Put some pecan in there with it? Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm going to get hungry here in a minute. Either that's some good red oak. That'd work, too. All right. Well, as y'all know, we are in a extreme drought. And fortunately for, for our area, we've been lucky as far as wildfires. There's some areas that have not been so lucky that uh, there's been some folks lose a lot of property and some homes. So y'all, sir? Yeah. No, they've been popping off left and right. That uh, that big fire in Balk Springs, I think they're up to 20 houses so far today. Yeah. So y'all keep those guys in your prayers and keep praying for rain because that's what we got to have. So. No. No. No, it's, it's going to be a hard season. I can tell you that right now. Hay season, deer season, squirrel season, whatever. It's all, the, all the deer last year were having twins. There were single farms this year. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it is. Yep. Neil, you started feeding hay yet? I ain't never stopped. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I don't feel so bad. I put the first bale out today. I've been putting out six about six bales every five days for the past month and a half. Whoo! I got I was telling Mike earlier, I got calves that are probably four months old. And the sprinkler came on today on the aerobic system and they looked at it like, what in the world is that? They ain't never seen no rain. They don't know what it is. They they'll probably stand out there and drown when it starts raining, but I have to go out there and cover them with an umbrella. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put some of them little blow up ones on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Who wants to kick us off this evening? Dave? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am.
Wow. Thank you. That's good stuff, yeah. You got her signed up for next year, too? That's right. You just got to take the first step. Yep. Yes, ma'am. What was her last name? Parker. Y'all remember the Virginia Parker family? Is that? Okay. Ms. Ann? Amen. Yes, ma'am. You sure? Dale? Come on, Mr. Everett. That's awesome. That's right. Yep.
Thank you. Ms. Ann? Okay. Thank you. On Saturday. Good deal. Jennifer's aunt that had surgery, surgery went well. They said it couldn't have gone better. So prayers were answered. All right. Yes, most definitely. There's something coming. There is something coming. Let's go to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight. Lord, just thankful that we can gather up. Lord, just openly gather up and worship you. Lord, we're thankful for thankful for everything you do for us. Lord, we're thankful for the praises thankful for Lord just being able to come to you when we're in a bind when we need answers we have a relationship that we can talk to you and we thank you for that Lord sometimes we don't always get the answers that, that we want but they're your answers and you make a way for those answers Lord we've heard tonight from families that are Struggling for different reasons. Lord, loved ones that have gone home. Loved ones that are sick. Loved ones that are battling struggles, demons. Lord, we just ask that you wrap them up. Comfort them, Lord. Let them know. Let them feel your presence. Let them know that, that they're not alone, Lord. Let them know that they got somebody to talk to. Somebody that'll, that'll give them an honest answer, Lord. Lord, we pray for these families that have lost their properties and their homes due to these wildfires. Lord, we pray for, for our brothers and sisters who are out there on the, front, on the lines. Lord, doing what they can do to stop this. Lord, we pray for our country. Lord, I ask that whatever it takes, we... We turn this country around, put, put you first. Because without you, Lord, we're, it's just chaos. Lord, we thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you for everything you're going to do for us. And we know that challenges, challenges only build us, make us stronger. And we know that you'll provide when it's time to provide. So, Lord, I'm just asking that you help us make it through these struggles, and when it's right, Lord, we'll be rejoicing. We love you, and we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Y'all smile. Some of y'all aren't smiling. You're kind of frowning out there. It's not very much fun to sit up here and look at you guys frowning. So... Let's uh, 
Maybe, yeah. yeah. Let's worship the Lord together. Y'all just sing with us, and you should know most of these songs. Show 
I was, was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart. My fears relieve How precious is that grace The hour I first believe How's everybody doing this evening? I'll tell you what, it was, it's was it been quite a day today. Uh, I mean, I kind of go back a little bit that uh, I don't know where to start. I was praying to God, I said, show me how to start because there's so many things I want to say. Let's start off with prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity you give us each and every day. Lord, thank you so much for what you do in our lives. Lord, we know we can't do it. We know we have no control. If we did, we would all mess it up. And Lord, we thank you that you carry us through. Lord, you guide us. You he gives us direction. When we, know there's no, when we don't know there's a direction, we don't know which way's up, which way's down. But Lord, you, you pick us up and you guide us and your light shines through us and shines away for our path. Be with us, guys, Lord. I pray that you speak to me what you want me to say, and, Lord, that I'm obedient to, to say exactly what you want me to say. Jesus, and I pray. Amen. So I had two different ways to start it, because I could go back to last Friday or go to this, uh, yesterday morning. So I'm going to go to yesterday morning first. So Sean texted me and said, Hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out. Wednesday, you know, still, I've kind of recovered, but April's still kind of on the weather from COVID, and uh, he said, man, I, I'm not, I won't be able to prepare for it, so can you, can you share what you shared Saturday? I said, yeah, sure. 
So go back to Saturday. I actually go back to last Friday, I guess. About 1 o'clock Monday, uh, Friday evening, Sean said, hey, man, I've got COVID. He texted me and Mike said, uh, and we have memorial service tomorrow. He said, uh, can one of y'all fill in? And I kind of waited. I was at my desk doing some work. I kind of waited to see if my, Mike was going to chime in. And it's kind of like radio silence. Come on, Mike. What are you going to say? So Matt said, yeah, we'll get it done. I said, what do you want to do? I said, whatever you already got prepared. He said, well, here's the obituary. Here's the what happened this year and everything. And that was about it. I said, okay, do you have a message you want to, you want to lead with? He said, there's one one thing that really stuck out to him about Miss Sue Vickery said a lot of times he remembers so many times whenever service was over with and he'd be sitting, standing up front, she would come up for prayer. He said she was always, always come up for prayer. I said, okay, that's great, man. I, I got thinking back. See, I remember that. So many times she was always asking for prayer. I said, great. I, I'll give you something to go with. I said, do you have any scriptures? You know, to go along with it, what, which, which way you're leading for, towards. Sounded just like this right here, nothing. He said, no, I don't have any scripture. I said, okay. So I started reading my Bible, and, and I, I I opened it up, and something drew me to Philippians. And that's where we're going to start off with. So Sean said, uh, when, t- uh, when I was talking to Sean on Friday, he said, I asked him, what memory have Miss Sue? And he told me one thing that really stuck out that made a profound statement about Sue was that she, that he remembered her always coming up uh, on, sad, on Sundays asking for prayers for her, Mr. John, or family, or just about anything. I thought to myself a bit, and he said, yeah, I remember her praying uh, with her many times. He said, you'd really tell what she was, you could uh, really tell that she was very serious about her request. And so I kept thinking about that. And everybody remembers Miss Sue sat right there in that second chair right there, second row on the inside. And uh, I tell the story the other day about one, one uh, Sunday, the lady got here for Miss Sue did, and she sat right there in that seat. And Miss Sue kind of walked up, and as that nonverbal communication, she just looked at her. And Delia looked up at her, and what? But Delia could know. She knew you're in my spot. So Delia got up and moved. And I got thinking about that. And I said, you know, the more I thought about it, it wasn't that that was Miss Sue's spot right there. She knew Mr. John had could hear better from right there because it's right at that speaker. That's the reason why she wanted to sit right there. I said, okay, that's good. So actually, I was thinking earlier this week. I said, that's not it. I thought that's what it was. The real reason why she sat right there, because when Sean was standing right there at the end of the service, is the uh, closest and straightest shot to get up there to have Sean pray with her. That's why she sat right there. She knew, without a doubt, shadow of doubt, that she needed prayer, and that's what she was going to do. She's going to get up there as fast as she can and ask for prayer. So like I said, later on I was reading in Philippians 4, and verse 6 says, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That's what it should be. We should be praying about everything. That should be our first response. Last year, me and Delia took our grandson to Fort Worth. We went to uh, the stockyards and everything, but we've... We were camping out, out, out in our travel trailer outside of town and we was thumbing through the channels one evening. And, of course, we didn't have very good reception. We got very few channels. And we come across a Touch by an Angel. Y'all remember that, that show, that series? It says, you remember Tess was an older angel and Monica, she was a younger angel trying to earn her wings. I mean, just, oh, just call her what... Uh, Huh? Baby girl. You know, she always had that gruff talk to her, but, you know, baby girl. In this particular episode, Monica was struggling over different circumstances. Tess would repeatedly suggest to her, 
Ask the answer. Monica's, uh, several times you could see the frustration of Monica, you know, getting frustrated. What we do so many times, we struggle with things. And she's getting frustrated, struggling with, the, with, with that situation. And Tess would repeat, ask the answer. She had no idea what she'd mean by that. Monica did not know what she meant uh, when she said over and over, ask the answer. Finally, towards the end of, this, of that particular series, Tess looked up when she said, ask the answer. And at that moment, Monica understood what she was saying. She understood that God was the answer. He is the answer. So how many times we try to deal with things our own way? We struggle our, ourselves, you know, before we ever go to ask God for prayer or ask him for help, we're trying it ourselves. Miss Sue knew she had a struggle. She had something that needed to be, she was struggling with something that needs prayer. She's going to come up first thing and ask for prayer. And that's what we should be doing. She said, when you have a question or have a situation you can't figure out or are struggling with, you wouldn't go to someone who could not guide you or direct you. You would go to someone with experience, maturity, and wisdom. When I, when I struggle with something, I'm not going to go to somebody less mature. I want, I, want, I want answers. I want somebody that knows from experience of what I'm going through. I can't help somebody with situations I haven't dealt with personally. But God has put us in situations recently for unique situations that we can help people through right now. Go over to Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guide your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Knowing who to ask, knowing who to go to when, you need, when you're struggling, when you have situations. Yes, we can go to other people. But this is the far and foremost, basic instruction, instruction before leaving earth. In Matthew uh, 6, 33, says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So who do you ask? You ask God. You go to God first. If you go to him first, what other options are there? What, what other is, issues should you have? I had a uh, mentor, a guy that mentored me for several years. He always told me one saying a lot. I can't, he can, why don't I let him? And he used to repeat that over and over again, and it never really sunk in. But when I'm struggling, when I have issues, and I feel like I'm up to here with it, with it, and I don't know what to do, I can't do anything with it. Turn it over to God. I can't, he can, well, and I let him. And that's the thing is we want to hold on to these things like this, right? I mean, that's my problem, my issue. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to, I'm going to figure the solution out. And but we get white-fingered and, and red-knuckled if we just turn it over to God. I know it's a hard thing to do, especially for men, especially for people that just, man, I got this. I can figure this thing out somewhere or another. Turn it over to God. He can, he, can, he can guide us through it. So look to God first. This should be our first response. I want to say, I would like to say through all the struggles we went through in the past two months that, man, we, me and Delia was on our hands, our knees constantly. I want to say that, boy, we did, everything that was going on, every question we had, every doubt we had, we prayed about it. I can't, but I'm learning. That's what we're supposed to do in learning and sharing with other people what we've learned because there's many times at night that we're doing everything we can do. God has to give us that peace that, we, that he knows we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. 
only he could give us that that assurance. We would have people come in and tell us, you're doing great. You're doing more than what we've seen other people do. That didn't feel any peace to hear. But I guarantee you, last Monday, I felt peace. Because I know that we've done everything we do because God was there with us. And without that, there would be no peace. In 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, I like this first part. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourself. That doesn't mean I have to be low, down, and out. In this situation, humbling, listening. Listening was the key to me. Listen to what God had to tell me. I can't. He can. Why don't I just let him? So many times I want to hang on to that because we're going to find a solution. We're going to find an answer. But until I let God take control of it. Verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, and he, for he cares for you. Casting all your care upon him. That doesn't mean some of it. Cast all your care, all your burdens upon him. For he cares for you. It means he'll pick you up. He'll take care of you. He won't answer all your, all your problems, but you can release them to him. Because I guarantee you, this, this past week's been very difficult. Somebody says, well, how are you doing? I said, I don't know. I don't have time to stop and think about it. God's taking care of me. That's the only thing I can tell you. He is. Excuse me just a second. My next verse, I went over to uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. It says, pray without ceasing. What does that mean? Man, I just pray with, to God when I, where I'm in need, wherever I got, I'm struggling. It's so easy to just pray to God when we're down in the valleys, when we think we're, we, we, we had nowhere else to go. I didn't give Dale this next verse. Well, actually, I did. If you go back to uh, Thessalonians, I'll just read it to you. Thessalonians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Because he's with us in low, time, low valleys and he's with us in our good times, right? Man, I, I, I tell you what, being a believer, I turn my life over to God. Life's going to be great. There's not going to be any struggles, not going to be any issues. But what's nice about it, I'm not alone. And the man to live wasn't alone. We had people praying for us. We had people praying with us. Last Sunday, uh, we had to call a house with in because my mom was running temperature. And I... I I didn't know what to do at that t particular time. We called the, uh, the guy from hospice in. He come in, and he told us where we was at. We told, told us what stage was in and everything else. Really great guy. Before he left, he said, can I pray with you? <laughs> Absolutely. Man, I tell you what, I, I, God, could, God sent him. That's the only thing I can tell you. God sent him. At 10 o'clock that evening, when I called him back out, he showed up. First thing he said, can I pray with y'all? Absolutely. Knowing somebody's there to pray with you, even whenever, not everybody knows your needs all the time. Just knowing somebody's there, asking, man, I just need some prayer right now. I know there's several people. Did I get texts? Hey, I need prayer. What do you do? We should stop and pray immediately. Pray without ceasing. Take that opportunity. You don't know when you, if you'll get another one, right? 
because that might be the most, that is the most that you can do for that person at that time. It was funny this morning. I looked on my Facebook. I, I was sitting at my desk. I was kind of in between different tasks today, and I kind of looked up Facebook, and a memory popped up that I shared back in July the 27th, 2016. It's from Romans 12:12. 12, 12. Be joyful in hope, patience in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. That's what I needed the last two months. I did not have that at the time. I, I wish I, that came up earlier. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. That's what we should be doing the whole time. Reading in Philippians 4. If you get an opportunity, flip over to that, that chapter. Man, it's got so many good scriptures that gives you Verse 16, uh, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Man, the, the whole chapter right there is full of encouragement. It's not only that book, but several other books in here that gets, but, you know, looking Proverbs. And, but I, I, some reason last Friday I was drawn to Philippians and it brought me to, to chapter 4. I'm going to finish up tonight on... Uh, Philippians 4, starting in verse 8. I didn't give this to Dale, but I'm going to read it and encourage you to go back and read it. It says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, Meditate on these things. Verse ten, uh, 9 says, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the Lord of peace will be with you. As I was reading all those, whatever things, what it comes down to in anything, God has joy in everything. When we're struggling, because we're not struggling alone, God's with us. What did those what did those struggles do to you? They encourage you, they build you up. I tell Sean a lot of times, you know, whatever we're going through, we know God's got a purpose for us. Because He's building us up so we can help somebody else that's going through the struggles we're going through right now. We're not the only ones going through these struggles. You're not the only ones going through your struggles. I know each and every one of you have his own struggles each and every each and every day. Some not every day, but if like I say, if you're not going through one storm, you just come out or you're fixing to go through another one. But you're not the only ones going through those. I guarantee there's probably not one struggle that one person is going through here that another person happened not come out of the, that same kind of struggle. What do we do? We talk about what we've been through. Not look for sympathy or pity, pitifulness from us because somebody else might be heading into that same storm. And so we can encourage those, those people. Hey, this is, this is a simple thing. This, this is just a, a temporary situation. That's what we're here for, is to encourage everybody else, to encourage others. We've got people that has all walks of life in here. And I've talked to people, and they've been through the same struggles I've been through the last four, two months. I said, yeah, I've been there. It's all temporary, right? This has been a very difficult day. 
But you know what? Tomorrow's going to be a different day. Tomorrow's going to be better. Tomorrow, God's got me covered. And Saturday's going to be difficult. But you know what? There's Sunday. And then there's Monday. And there's Tuesday. Always, people say, how are you doing? I said, well, that's the reason my face is on the front of my head. That's the reason my toes point this way. They're not on the back of me. It's not to keep going. They're not to go backwards. They go forward. That's what we have to do. We got to go forward. You know, I lost my dad seven months ago. God had a plan for that. God had a plan. God was preparing me for last week. God had a plan through every part of our lives. And what a perfect plan he has. This is not just for me. It's not just for my wife. It's to help somebody else. And what a joy that would be. That's why I'm going back to Proverbs 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And he don't stop there. And again, I say rejoice. So that's how we ended it, rejoicing. Not having your head down, poor, pitiful me. If Sean was up here, he'd start singing that song, poor, poor, pitiful me. No, rejoicing. That's what we're going to do. That's what we do all the time. Because we got to keep going forward. Because when we hit this hill, we go down it, we're going to hit another hill later on. And with God behind us, God's pushing us. We ain't going to slow down. Let's finish in prayer. Dear Lord, thanks so much that you, you are. You're our strength. You're our, our healer. Lord, you're there with us. You're the light that shines through us. And like Troy always said, Lord, we need to keep our lenses clean so that your light will shine bright through ours. Thank you so much for the people you put in our paths, Lord, we love them with, we can learn from. And Lord, that we know that you are with us each and every day. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We pray for healing with the ones that's hurting right now. Lord, we pray for, pray for that right person coming in their path. Lord, it's been through that same struggle they're going through. And Lord, just pick them up and give them that word of encouragement, Lord, that you've got this. We can't. You can. All we have to do is let you. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Just now I pray. Amen.